Well, Amy, congratulations and welcome to your new Passat. We're going to go over a few things with you, just show you how a few things work. Uh, before we go inside, which is really where most of the uh, stuff is that I want to go over, go over a couple of things on the outside. First of all, I always like to point out how to open this gas door. On the diesels, it's a little bit different. You have to have at least the driver's door unlocked. So you push on the remote, the bottom button, just push it one time and it'll unlock the driver's door and that also opens the fuel door. Uh, to open the fuel door, you just click right here and the fuel door opens. Now you'll also notice that you've got a little circle thing right here and whenever you take this gas cap off, check this out, there's a little pointy thing and it sticks right down in there so the gas cap just sits right there and doesn't hang on to the paint. Uh, and then whenever you close it, you just click like that and that's it, re-click and that's it. Okay, on the trunk, you've got a clicker underneath the edge here and as long as the doors are unlocked, you just click right here. Oh, sorry, we don't have all the doors open. Open the driver's door. There we go. And there's a clicker inside under that edge. So here's the trunk. To fold the seats down, you'll use this thing right here and this one over here on this side. Spare tire is under here. There it is. Um, Another way you can open the trunk is with the remote. And let me let me show you how to do that. It's pretty much standard for most cars these days, but some people aren't used to it. Uh, on the remote, you've got the trunk button there in the middle. You push and hold, and the trunk will open. So it's not just one quick click. You have to push and hold on the remote, um, and that just eliminates any accidental openings of the trunk. So again, you've got the ability to open here on the trunk or on the remote sorry and then you've also got the ability to open under here uh, with the little clicky thing so I guess those are really all the things I wanted to go over on the outside let's get inside and we'll go over a few things here we are inside let me go ahead and start it up see the display up here go over all of that I guess we'll just start over here on the driver's door you've got your window buttons here all four windows front and rear are one touch automatic so you just push all the way down and it will put the window all the way down or you pull all the way up there's there are a couple steps in there in the switch so you'll feel that whenever you play with it and just pull up on that and it'll close everything or sorry close all the way by pulling up fully You've got your door lock and unlock button here. Hopefully all this will show up on the video well. There it goes. Mirror controls here. You twist to, if you see, let's see here. Twist up for left, twist down for right, and then it's kind of just a joystick at that point. If you want to use the heated mirrors, you spin all the way around. And then whenever you have your defroster on for the front window, it will activate your heated mirrors. All right, you've also got automatic headlights and this is your headlight control right here. It is currently on the automatic setting. That's what most people leave it on. And the light sensor will tell the headlights when to come on and go off. You've got a little compartment under here, just to the left of the steering wheel. And that's just for things. I've seen people put their garage door openers in there. I've seen people do um, business cards in there, that sort of thing. Down here on the door, this is your third way to open the trunk you've got a button just to release the trunk from inside the car. All right, over here on the turn signal arm, we've also got our cruise control settings and adjustments. Up here on the top, you've got that switch, which is currently off, and this is on. And then you've got set down here. If you push this end button on the bottom, if you push that down, it's set. You push it up, it's resume. On the other side, you've got the windshield wipers. So to turn those on, you just move the arm up. To wash the window, you pull the arm towards you. To just wipe one time, you push the arm down. And I'm not going to do any of this because the car was just washed and I don't want to make the windshield dirty. And then the first step up is your intermittent setting and then you've got your adjustability of the intermittent speeds there. Okay, over here we've got the clock up here, which stays set with the time on the stereo. This is your six CD changer. 
to load it, you push this button here, you push it, and you tell it which slot you want to put a CD into. Uh, to change from FM and satellite, you do that over here. You've got your media button here, which will allow you to listen to the CD player or use the memory card slot, which is this little slot down here on the bottom. You can put an SD card in with MP3s and play those through the stereo. And the media button also accesses the auxiliary input, which is down here in your armrest. Probably two, oh, there it is. See it down in there, the auxiliary input and power outlet with it. Uh, so you use the media button for that as well. This is all touchscreen, so whenever you want to set your presets, uh, you just tune to the station that you want. Let's just find something that is a station, just for an example. Here's one. And to set that as a preset, you just want to push and hold. And I don't know if that little ding noise came through on the video, but there's a little ding noise and that lets you know that you've set that preset. Uh, whenever you tune, you notice that a little tuner bar comes up down here on the bottom and uh, you can drag, it looks like an old radio, you can drag to the station you want to go to or you can just touch at different spots to get close to where you want to be. Uh, so that's kind of a, a cool little feature that everybody likes. To adjust the bass and treble and all of your other settings, you'll push this little music button top right corner and it's going to take you to the screen with all of those settings. Push that again to get out of it. Uh, you've got a mute button right here, setup button, oh, sorry, mute button, setup button to adjust everything, uh, all the settings in the radio. Your mirror is up here, and this has the sensors down here on the bottom. Don't know if they're going to come through very well. Sensors on the bottom for the auto dimming rear view mirror, so if somebody comes up behind you with their lights on, it will dim itself. Uh, you've got your sunroof control up here, which is this knob. In order to do a vent on the sunroof, you push up, and then here's the sunroof. Can you see it? Maybe? There it is. Uh, it's vented, or you pull back down on this and it will close. In order to open the sunroof, you twist this back. Now this first setting that it stops on, this is called the comfort setting. Uh, this is what Volkswagen has figured out will eliminate eliminate some of that noise that you get from sunroof sometimes that kind of sounds like a helicopter. Uh, if you do want to open it all the way you can do that by twisting the remaining amount and just holding it and it will go ahead and open fully. You've also got several of, several other steps in here that you can leave it on so that's that's pretty nice. You can adjust it uh, exactly how you like it. Okay, up here you also have, everyone always asks about this little switch, um, it's for your dome lights. Right now it's in the off setting, Let's see if I can get this to focus in, maybe. Off setting, there's a middle setting which is just flat, which is your door setting, and then if you flip over to the, to the right, it'll be on fully all the time. So, most people just leave it on the door setting, so it'll, those dome lights will come on when you open the door. Okay, let's see, down here we've got our air conditioner controls. This car's got dual zone climate, so you've got control for the left side, which you can see right now is on 70, and the right side is on 70 as well because we've got sync activated. So right now, if I change the knob for the driver, it's actually changing both because they're synchronized. If you don't want that to happen, you just push that sync button and now there's individual control for both sides. Now if sync is on and the passenger adjusts their temperature, it will automatically also turn off sync. So you can either turn it off by pushing sync or by just adjusting the passenger knob. Um, this button here, well actually this knob is for fan speed control, but you've also got a button in here that says auto that uh, if you push that, it just automatically adjusts the fan speed for what uh, temperature you have it set on. So that's that's pretty nice. I usually just leave mine on auto and just adjust the temperature. And if, uh, if I want it colder, I'll turn it down and it'll usually turn the fan speed up on its own. Uh, you've got your heated seat buttons here. There's one. And the one for the passenger is right here. And uh, those both have three settings, three levels. So there's three, two, one, and off.